what I'm thinking, the 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 I didn't have much to do in terms of like a weekly meeting. So what I'm thinking is that we should have a forum once a month on die to die files. As far as I can tell, there is no such forum anywhere else. And we'll use the file layer meetings on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. And so it isn't this it, it isn't devoted to a specific file, but that anybody who wants to share any information can come in. And we'll do it on one Tuesday a month, either the first Tuesday or the last Tuesday or something. Oh, interesting. What do you think? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, you can do it in the Friday meeting, if but I know your agenda is usually full, so either way is fine. It's I, it's I, really hard honest, to... I, have, I have conflict a lot of t uh, in a lot of the meeting. That's why you didn't see me too much. <laughs> but uh, but I I think the the five meetings, if it is uh, really just a general um, sync up. We already have oh, it in the individual uh, file. Uh, work with breaks. One second. Sorry, Kenneth. Yes, go ahead, please. I apologize. I saw David on the other bridge, and then, hey, Greg, if you can reach David, would you mind asking him to join this bridge, please? Um, go ahead, Kenneth. Oh no, no, no. I'm I'm just making just some general comment. I think it's a good idea. Um, yeah, so I, I think it'd be hard to reuse the um, Friday meeting. So if the, give me a slot that might work for you if you're interested in it. If Tuesday 9 a.m. doesn't work, what kind of slot will work for you? Unfortunately, the uh, the meetings are randomly set up, so I cannot commit a particular time. Uh, mm, okay. Yep. Okay. Then in that case, uh, um, okay. But, then but we'll... me, me, it's not important, right? So it's the the the, the team that is, you know. The, the, the expert team that the, is active is more important. So. Yeah, and I feel like there's a there, there's a need for something like that. Okay, I want to share. So uh, I think today's agenda was supposed to be Damien talking about the walking us through CXL, um, but he isn't here. So. Um, let's see. May, may, I ask is, may I ask a general question? So does the link layer team here has a repository similar to the GitHub for the other work streams? Not yet. I think we're ho we're hopefully going to get there. Um, this was something we just did for Hot Interconnect. And I think we're going to use this, the, the general trend. Arthur, do you want to sort of, um, uh, I think our general plan is to is to go for CXL, at least start with the CXL link layer, right? Um, so, 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 so basically, be 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 inspired by by CXL in in terms of fact, it's uh, uses a 512 bit payload for the flit, and also it has a, a suitable uh, error correction mechanism for the uh, bit, bit error ratio the underlying bit error ratio service you get get from something like a, a bunch of wires interface so um so the, so the idea is you 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 would be processing 512 bits in a single clock clock cycle add the suitable header and crc encapsulation to 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 that and then use a CXL type retry mechanism for 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 error correction. Um, that that is the the thinking. Da Damien was also suggesting using a block a block based F FEC um, on on those 512 bits to 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 correct that to forward error correction when. Uh, when either an NLZ thirties fifty gig and NLZ service is being used, or um, or you'd have a stronger FEC if you were using a pan pan four hundred gig 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 thirties. But the um, but basically it's five hundred twelve bits single clock clock cycle, and the main service that's being being provided at the link link layer is error correction, and um, yeah, I mean nothing's sort of being finalised yet, but the but, but definitely CXL type retry 
and then pro probably to to FEC options as well, depending on whether you need to uh, beef, beef up the uh, AA F50 gig 30s or NRZ 30s or, or 100 gig PAM4 30s. That's kind of where we're, where we're at. So, um, Kenneth, where we're at is roughly, Arthur, it's fair to say we have requirements, right? And we have to find a way to sort of go from requirements to actually proposing a specific protocol or de developing a protocol. Is, is that a fair statement? Yes. I mean, the, we, we, the, the two, two other things that can be, can be defined, the, the, the interfaces, and then also also, there's this, this business of having having two 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 layers, a purely generic layer, and then then an ad adaptation layer to to an individual phi. And the the first phi we we were looking at is bunch bunch fires, but but yeah, the next next stage would 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 be to to go from the requirements to 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 to, to more precise definition of the functionality. And um, and I guess we've um, I mean not, none of us seem seem to have so 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 there's the issue is if, if we we reuse re, reuse CXL uh, we're not we we're not yet aware of um, we haven't worked out what what that means in terms of of, of the copyright. And in the CXL documents, you haven't got any direct liaison with CXL. On the the FEC side of things, I did ask Damien um, last week whether um, synopsis would um, would sort of suggest the. Uh, I think synopsis have 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 worked out. Suitable coding schemes and whether whether the synopsis would would kind of don't donate those I suppose I mean I mean not not the obviously on the implementation detail but the specification of which exactly what what RS code code they 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 would use but yeah we haven't we haven't moved I mean I mean we've I mean what we've achieved is it is a common understanding of the requirements and and and. And 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 also a degree, I'd say a high degree of consensus on 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 the on the functionality, but but we haven't 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 really worked out how to actually write a standard based on that, and I'm not sure whether we've. Um, I mean, I, I think we we might need some guidance on the IIP and copyright stuff around that as well, from, from my my point of view. Any 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 anyway. I mean, I don't, don't know if you anyone else got any views on that. So. David or Nick or Greg, any any thoughts on how we jump from where we are to where we want to be? There seems to be a demand for a link layer from best I can tell, or interest maybe is the right phrase. Um, in terms of reusing CXL or using CXL as a starting point. So the, I guess the question I have is, is CXL the lowest level link layer that we can define, or is a pure raw flit a building block that you can then layer CXL on top of? Arthur, any opinions? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you could layer anything on, 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 on top of this. Um, um, I mean, my understanding of CXL is it's completely tied to P P P P P C I Express. Um, 
So okay, just to be clear, is the link layer for CXL we're talking about, Nick, not the whole protocol? I understand. What I'm saying is you have two triplets, and they both have AXI subsystems with ARM processors on them, and then you say, well, they got to talk to CXL to each other. Is that, uh, is that tying their hands, or are they... They have to no, they don't, they don't have to talk CXL to each other, right? Where the, the the idea here is to just swipe the CXL link layer alone and put whatever you want on top of it and whatever else you want underneath it. Okay. Well, it's 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 not it's not even it's it's not swiping the whole link layer. It's it's using the it's is using the error correction mechanism that that CXL has. So that that'll be a re, 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 reuse of the CRC flit flit size and um, and, and and retry mechanism. Um, so it's, it's it's a subset of a subset. Okay. Small sub, very small right. subset. That's a, that's, that's a different uh, different proposition then. Yeah, and I I mean more the point I was making if we just if we just sort of took that and wrote it up in in an ODC document. I mean, I'd assume we would very least be a courtesy to to liaise with the CXL consortium to tell them that that, that we we were doing that, um, and um, and and then would probably need to ask acknowledge their copyright fit. Perhaps I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, see these sorts of IP details. I mean, the the other thing that that it it seemed to me is that that. Quite a lot of the OCP stuff is based on donations of of, of existing stuff, and um, but if you're trying to write write a standard among with a, with a group group of people, it's different. There's, there's a different sort of um, process that need, needs to be followed. Uh, so sorry for not knowing the background of the uh, the discussion. Um, may I ask wh why specifically CXL link layer, but not PCI Express uh, link layer? Because the CXL link layer, uh, they have this uh, arc marks underneath, right? If what we are interested in is the link layer itself, and then uh, there's no definition of the arc marks concept, it really doesn't make a difference between the PCI Express data link or the CXL data link, right? Am I yeah, yeah, as I said, it's not, it, it's not, it is is only a re reuse of the of the error correction me mechanism, and 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 I'm talking about CXL 2.0. I'm not talking about the the, the ne next whatever it is, 3.0. It's not so 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 it's not it, yeah. It's not it's not a reuse of CXL as such. It's just a reuse of of, of the error correction component. Uh, that that's all. Um, and may I so, ask, is it meant to be flip based or or just regular TLP like concept? Yeah, flip, flip yes, for for latency reasons, flip flip based, and 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 yes, that's the problem with um, with the PCI Express is you you have all these variable sized t, 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 TLPs. So so this would be the. I mean, it's 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 a really 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 low low level service. It's it's a fixed it's a fixed size, and it's really low latency. And and the own own sort of wide 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 interface. So you, so you get get through throughput, and and the only real service that's being being provided by 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 the link layer is 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 the error correction. And and also it it would um, abstract. It's also an, it gives you an, an abstracted a high level of abstractions layer layer below. So it's just, it's just, so the idea is it would be simple, 512 bit in, in, in interface, um, which abstracts the the lower layers for you, and and it and it, and it provides reliability through through either re retry or, or FEC depending on the on, on, on the phi phi layer below. I mean that that's the concept. Got it. Thank you.
to how do we get from where we are? <laughs> What's the first? I mean, I guess somehow we have to do it in bytes, but I'm not smart enough to figure out what the first byte is. So, so, so I mean, the, the detail in the, the, the need, needs to be done is, 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 is writing up the mechanism for the, the, the error, error correction and the um, and, 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 and the retry would, would stuff could be re reused from CXL and then the FEC stuff could be do donated by, by Synopsys. I mean, I don't know if, well, donated by, by Damien. I don't know if he's prepared to do that. And then... Um, wait, wait, what's the difference between FEC and error correction? I I'm asking, not commenting. Well, there are various mechanisms for, for, for error correction. So if you've got, so for example, if you've got, got some like a bunch of it, wires interface, the, the bit error ratios of that is going to be really, really, really good. So it'll be something like 10 to the minus 15 bit, bits in error. So, so, so all, all, you, all you need to do is, is, um, is detect, you, you may never see an error if it's, if it's like wait, that. Wait. But, but, Hold that thought for one second. Greg's online too. So yesterday there's a guy who showed some data in the bunch of wires group that on a terabit link, a bit error rate of 10 to the minus 18, I think, results in an error once every 11 days. Yes, yeah, so you don't need you don't need an RS you don't need an RS fec type mechanism or something like that because because well, no don't... once in eleven days is a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it's very good. So so in no. that case, you, you still well, well you can also have an error it. well you can have an error detection mechanism. So once every eleven days you do a retry or you basically say hey we got to send that packet again, right? So there's a difference between having an error every minute that you want to correct versus having one every 11 days that you want to recover from. So exactly. there's error detection and there's error correction. So it depends on where you want to draw the line on. How much weight yeah. do I want to put on the over overhead do I want to put on the transmission to correct errors that occur once every 11 days, once every year, versus put a mechanism to detect the error and then have some higher level protocol recover from it. Well, well, the the CXL mechanism does does that automatically for for you, and um, and so, so so basically, as you said, as you said, in in that that case, so what what CXL 2.0 does is it that's exactly what it does at kind of, kind of low level. It it will detect the error, and then um and and then initiate a uh, initiate the uh, re retransmission for 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 you. And if it does that once every 12 days, you wouldn't really notice it. Um, I, th I think the key thing, but the key thing here is that who's is is designating who's responsible for the reliable transmission of data. So for something like PCIe and and bunch of wires and all the use cases we're talking about, uh, we're we're expecting the hardware to provide a reliable transport, whereas other other protocols, you know, like Ethernet and stuff like that. That that can be done at a higher level in software, uh, and so so I, I think we we've kind of gone down. I mean, we, we're going down the path of like PCIe and all the reliable hardware transports. So so I, I think you do have you do have the choice of doing the mechanism of either detecting and retrying, um, you know, detecting the errors on the receive side and retrying by having some acknowledgement handshake between the receive and the transmit. Or you you pass along error correcting code and have the receive side detect and correct over there, uh, but 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 uh, I think it's kind of been a given that uh, that we we've, we've decided the hardware has to be a reliable transport. So even if you get an error every 11 days, um, the hardware is still responsible for for uh, cleaning that up. Um, but yeah. It, you know, incidentally, Dipart, I, I, as far as I can tell, and Gary's not on here, as far as I can tell, Dipart has a CRC, but it doesn't have a retry mechanism. Hey, Bobby, I got to drop off as a neck. Uh, but I, I, I like, actually like this idea of using the CXL format, but not the CXL protocol itself for the, you know, the transport. But uh, I got to drop off. I have a call for that. Okay. Yeah, um, so, sorry, I need to drop as well. So. Uh... Yep. Okay, okay. Might yep. end up being a 
Uh, thanks for coming by, Kenneth. Thank uh, you very much. Thanks, all. So, Arthur, the desire for a link layer matches what the bow guys want as well. Um, I mean, excuse me, error correction. I'm sorry. The desire for error correction being our first. So, if I understand you correctly, you're saying the first thing we need to do is ECC or somehow bring the bit error rate of the hardware link up. So, 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 yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so in a chiplet environment, you need need a very, very good, 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 good uh, robustness as to, to, for, for for error. And and what what are yeah, I apologize for making it clear. I mean, the, the point is you have different phis, and each of those phis has its own bit error ratio service. And and depending on what what that is, you use a different mechanism to 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 correct it. So if it's something like a pan four thirties, you, you you have to have um, sort of forward error correction in that because because the underlying service you get get from a pan four thirties is always going to be be not that good. So you have to use RS read solve and forward error correction. And something okay. like a bunch of wires. You, 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 the underlying service is very good, so so you can rely on a different error error cor correction mechanism, which would be basically uh, a retry when you when when when, when so you detect an error and then you just re retry. So, so sorry. Yeah. I... yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I think I would characterize the trade off this way, and you know, I, I apologize if. If this is covering stuff that everyone knows, but I, I kind of characterize it this way: is that that uh, that you know you can have a it, we're all to, in, sorry, <laughs> organize my thoughts before I speak. Uh, so so we we all agree that I think that the hardware has to provide reliable transport, and then the two two primary classes are are the forward error correction where you do the, the error detection correction on the on the receive side, like I said. Um, or you do uh, a you know a CRC style thing where you detect the error on the receive side, but tell the the transmit side to retransmit. And there, I think there are very tra various trade offs there. Um, and it's it's not clear to you know if you, if if you have infrequent errors, then the cost of retry is relatively low uh, in terms of adding latency. Other than the fact that calculating CRC over a large you know a large uh, group of bits um, means that you have to you have to basically you know you have to wait for the CRC to arrive on the receive side and if you're calculating CRC over 512 bits you have to wait for all 512 bits to res to arrive uh, that may not necessarily be good uh, use of latency for certain in certain applications so so I think um, you know that, that like I said, the, there is a latency component, I think, to, to doing CRC. And, and also, if you have a high enough error rate, the retry rate goes way up. That also causes you to have, um, <clears throat> that also causes you to, have to in, incur more latency because what you're doing is you're kind of backing out and re, you know, resending flits. Um, and and in, in certain applications where you have some service guarantees or some, you know, uh, uh what's the word for it <laughs> uh yeah, yeah so so qos or service guarantees or you're concerned about latency uh variants that that can actually be become kind of a problem because this retries cause your cause your uh cause your uh latency uh distribution to 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 be more variable um so I, and i think the the other thing the other thing is i you know, when I when I've been looking at this, is is, is that I think the forward error, error correction costs you costs you some amount of uh, costs you some amount of uh, bandwidth in terms of adding correction on the transmit side, you know, error error correcting code of some sort on the transmit side, and then you know receiving it and, and unpacking all that stuff. There's some cost there in the transmission, but there's also uh, you know the acknowledgement handshakes, depending on what the retry mechanism looks like, also cost you something. It's just it's just not on the transmit side. It's it's kind of it's on the acknowledgments coming back. Uh, so it, the the CRC retry stuff is not 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 free. Uh, maybe it's not as as 
as costly as FEC or ECC. So, 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 so just in case it wasn't clear, I mean, the idea is to define both mechanisms and make them both optional. So, yeah. So, so you can you you use either, and as as you say, I mean, they, yeah, there's a cost. I mean, whatever you do, there's a, there's a cost to it. Um, and but the and uh, so it depends on 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 your use case, your application, the underlying Absolutely. the underlying uh, series, um Sorry, the underlying line fi, fi architecture. Um, yeah. Oh. Well, well, so, so this, uh, and this goes back to one of the things that I've been struggling with, and I've, I've brought up a couple times, so I'll bring it up again, which is, which is, uh, you know, de designing the, you know, designing all these layers kind of in a vacuum, in, so that they're independent of each other. I think introduces overheads that that we certainly, you know, from a BOW perspective, uh, is, you know, is. Is makes makes it unattractive, right? So I I still would like to advocate somewhat that that we we try to think about the the solution, uh, the the architecture of the solution, rather than just the individual layers. And so so if it comes down to you know optimizing for a particular stack, that that to me that makes sense because you know, kind of, you know, architecting this or designing this in a vertical sense rather than a horizontal sense uh, means that means that I think the, the end solution will be more attractive to more people. But, you know, that's that's kind of my my philosophy and opinion on this. And other people may disagree. I just I just think part of it is we got to keep in mind the, the whole the whole stack. And when we define a link layer, we have to understand who the consumer of the link layer is. Uh, is it because that you know at the end of the day this is going to get adopted based on its you know based the link layer is not going to be adopted by itself it's it's going to be the entire stack and so uh, anyway I, I, I'll, I'll I'll step down from no, my no, soapbox no, for a moment. I totally I totally agree with with what you just said though yeah I mean it's got to be useful or, or people won't use it um, I mean I'm not I mean, you did. I mean, if I heard you rightly, you did. You did say it. it the it bunch wise does need an error correction service. So I mean, so so the proposed link layer is potentially useful to you in that it provides that service. So um, is that right? So you do you do need need, need error correction of some some sort. Yeah, yeah, I think I think there's uh, yes, yeah, yeah, so there's certainly the desire for error detection, um, and okay. and whether you, whether that, whether it rises to error correction, that's that's another you know that's a different uh, that that's a different you know use case, and in our particular use case, we care about that stuff, so we do need both you know detection and correction. But I think Gary has a, you know, Gary's Gary's design point's a little interesting because the last I checked, like I said, uh, the, the Diport stuff had CRC on the packets, but it doesn't, but it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it doesn't um, go off and and provide a retry mechanism to correct the errors. So, which which kind of surprised me, but again, maybe their data rates are are lower than than we're talking about here. So. So I think there is a, there are, are different design points here, um, where where correction may not be necessary. But I don't think I don't think, as far as I can tell, no one has said detection is not necessary. So I, that's just you know another avenue to, to consider here. So the other thing with bunch bunch wires is 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 the exposed interface to to the bunch wires phi is. Is quite fast, isn't it? And quite, quite narrow. Is that right? Is it sort of four gig or sixteen lanes of four gig or something? So is that what it is? Uh, yeah. It's. I mean, it's a it's a fast parallel interface. Not quite. I mean, it's it's almost reaching thirty speeds. But uh, yeah. Yeah. So 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 another useful thing the the link layer can do is if it standardizes that interface to be say. 512 bits at one one gig, then that 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 might be more 
useful than because so more 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 generic let's put it put it put it that way so that's that's another thing that so, so i mean there are probably two two things that need so if, if you just take if, if you just focus if, if, if the only thing you care about is with, with bunch, bunch of wires it seems to me they're two they're two useful things a a, a layer above it could do one one is the error, error correction service and then the other is sort of, sort of making a bit making it wider um because because ultimately in in, in, your, in your ASIC implementation you, you, you're going to want to interface to it to a wide wide interface and something like 512 bits clock clocks to gig or, or the, that sort of frequency yeah that um, gives you your terabit link right so yeah well so yeah it'll be two two gig for 512 bits yeah and if that's too fast then maybe maybe 100 1024 bit 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 option um but um yeah it has to i mean whatever the, we we propose for the link layer it, it has to be seen to be useful and and um I mean, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think it, I think it's you know, ultimately, I, I, at least the, the two camps I see here are the are the the BOW camp and the and the and the Surtees Phi camp, and so so I, I, I'm you know maybe maybe there's maybe there's room for a more general solution such that such that it addresses other files but uh but that seems to be kind of where things are falling um yeah yes and to on, answer that I, I think that's acknowledged that, 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 that those are the yeah yeah i mean it's it, but basically the die to die interfaces will either be wide bunch of wire type things or or the these high, high speed circuits so, so i think there's probably some sense on that and and the and they and and then I think I think that I mean we could be wrong, but but I think I think the consensus in 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 the link layer group discussions is is those require different error correction mechanisms, so therefore you support them both. Oh, um, oh sure, and, and I was sorry, so I, I'm sorry I was unclear. I was expanding that to even something to to be more broad, right? Because because I, and it was, I was kind of responding to your comment about having a, a defined interface for BOW, just like there would be a defined interface for um, a defined interface for uh, for certies, right? So so I think um, yeah, what what I what I, I I you know what I'll float as a kind of a trial balloon <laughs> is that is that the link layer be written. The link layer spec be written in such a way that there's the there's this set of stuff that uh, and, and maybe this is maybe this I'm just stating the obvious but but uh, uh, but you know the, I, I think that the link layer specification should be written and optimized for the various things underneath uh, and and the two obvious ones are are obvious you know the Surtees thing and the and the BOW thing and so. Um, I guess kind of what I'm asking is indirectly is whether uh, that's a sufficient, you know, at least in the near term, is that a sufficient set of 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 physical layers that uh, that are interesting that we can just focus on and not worry about being too general? I think so. The third, the third one is 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 Open HBI, but that is probably has similarities uh with bun bunch of wires um okay that's fair yeah i mean uh if there's a third one that's that's interesting to enough people then uh then yeah we should consider that but i i think in the in the in the interest of making progress in the short term i i kind of feel like we should we should narrow the under you know the the, the underlying are the interfaces to the underlying physical layer we we as i understand it right now the when we we can change our mind but 
we sort of set LPF down to the underlying physical layer. And then we set expectations of 10 to the minus 15 for the minimum reliability of the phi layer. So if the phi can't get to 10 to the minus 15, it uses its own ECC to get to 10 to the minus 15. I think we moved moved on from that, Bappy. Yeah, that was the 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 original um the 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 the, the, the original assumption, but the, the, the SOTIS can't can't give you 10 to the minus 15. So for, for efficiency reasons, if they need forward error correction, you might as well to to define a forward error correction that takes it takes it up to the really high high levels that, that are needed for, for, for chip to chip. Because if you if 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 you have two so so if you if you require the phi's to do to do their own you know, initial error corrections times 10 to the minus 15, then you do, do more error correction on top. That's that's very inefficient and, and okay. in terms of Fair. So, throughputs and, 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 and latency, yeah. So you, you, you get whatever error rate you get from the phi, but are we still, we're still sticking to LPF as the preferred sort of single interface downwards, right? I, I think, uh, I think LPF is, um, Again, again, I think we've 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 probably moved moved on from that as well. So, but this one we had a discussion so, just before we submitted the paper, and we said LPF was it, right? I mean, I, I remember having this. We, we had an email exchange, something. We said, let's take this thing that's already been defined instead of defining our own. Right. Well, a subset of LPF then. Um, I mean, the point point about these interfaces is that they're going to be very simple. They're they're just going to be wide interfaces um and the the only extra signal you probably have on there is is a valid in indication um so we could just um sort of a, a zero out a bunch of signals in lpf that we don't need basically yeah and it, it'll probably be an awful lot of them yeah okay yeah so so far so good so then the other the, the other the, the other the other thing we the other important point is is this is uh, and 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 the for the others is is a die to die environment is 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 very very benign it it's not it's effectively an engineered link it's not not play yet. Uh, good 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 good, good it, 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 the channel is very good. It, it, it is very benign compared to some of the PCI Express channel. And then things like the the management is um, is, is easy too because every, everything's fixed in place, and you can and you can do all the the the, the control uh, through um, through something separate like like I squared C. So you don't. So so all this stuff you have in. PCI Express for training and 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 uh, plug and play and things like that are just just not need, needed at all. And 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 I think a lot of if you look at the LPIF spec, I think a lot of it is to do with configuration and bring up and, and training, and that can all be handled separately through through side sideband signals. So you don't need 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 any of that. So. Um, so, so, so even with so even if you, yeah. So um. so, uh, so let me get this straight. Sorry. Um, so we've got we've got some LPF substitute or LPF subset. We've got the two forms of. We've got a one one link layer, one file layer which offers around ten to the minus fifteen or or better. Another file layer is probably going to offer less than 10 to the minus 15. Correct. Yeah. And so, are we going to have both? So we have three choices or two choices, right? We've got error detection followed with combined with retry or error correction combined with retry. Is do I have it right? No. If it's error correction, you don't need retry. So it's going to be Keep error detection and retry or error correction. It's a choice of those two. So, so both would be defined, and you, you can select which which of the two you want, or not, or neither. 
wouldn't it be simpler yeah. to just ha have an e you know weak and strong ECC code come uh, with a, always with a retry? Just as, as the protocol. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I, yeah, and I think there's there's kind of a latency trade-off, right? So there's there's the you could argue that calculating CRC is has better latency because you can do it off the critical. You can do the you, you, well, I don't I don't know. It's so uh, maybe I should just describe the process as, as the way I see it is that if you do a CRC retry scheme. You're, you're calculating CRC over some set of bits, you send it to the other side, there is a potential that you can do the CRC off the critical path, you know, the CRC check off the critical path and only retry, uh, you know, only retry if necessary, um, in which case, in which case, you, you know, you, you do have, you know, the, the, the question then becomes on the receive side, uh, can you can your if you if you detect a CRC error of some sort, can your error signal catch up with the data, or does it have to be presented with the data? Uh, you know, in, in in the former case, that means that you could do CRC off the critical path as long as you can as your error signal can qualify the data at some point down the line. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, you, you know, if you have to present the data and the error signal simultaneously, then then, then uh, there's no latency when there. With with you know some sort of ECC or FEC, you have to do both the you have to do both the calculation on the transmit side in you know, kind of in line, uh, and on the receive side in line as well. Uh, but you could you could make the same arguments. So I, I don't know. It's sort of implementation dependent, <laughs> and I think about it. Um, the only the only thing that uh, the only thing that uh, that I would say, having looked at this, is that is that I that CRC tends to be done. You know, CRC is you, you're you're trying to you're trying to minimize the amount of check bits that are you're adding to the to the data stream, and so CRC tends to be done over a large quantity of of things, uh, whereas ECC, you know, co the code words can be smaller. And so, depending on what you're doing with the rest of the with the rest of the link layer and, and encapsulation and, and and packing the flits and things like that, then then uh, you know the, the the CRC relative to relative ECC that that calculation can be um, you know take longer or shorter depending on on how everything else goes how everything else is is sort of structured, and so. I know I'm, I'm I'm not explaining this. It's it's hard to explain this kind of in the abstract. <laughs> no, so. I I get get what you you're saying. I mean, I yeah. I mean, I I don't know. I, I mean, I my, my my understanding is is, is you could do. <clears throat> so, so so these basically the the the, the what, what what in terms of detection, what what was being proposed was a 16 bit. CRC with with 512 bits of data. Um, my understanding was you could you could do do that check in in a single <laughs> box cycle, so in a nanosecond. Um, oh, oh right, uh, but you have to wait for the whole you have to wait for the whole 512 bits to be transmitted. That's that's the that that's where yeah. the the latency. Oh yeah. Is. Oh yeah, yeah. So the uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So the the vision, so the vision is 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 uh, is that the the, the link layer <laughs> does everything in a sing, single clock clock cycle, and 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 basically the what it is processing is it is it is processing a fixed length flit in 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 a single clock cycle. That that that's the vision. Yeah. So so yes, yeah, so if you've got if it's connected to a Surdis, you 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 would. Or more than one set is you you would need it to uh, to to receive yeah I mean <laughs> it wouldn't it, it would do do it all to you take so so I mean the 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 vision was that it would take five so if it's six L type type encapsulation what 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 the the link layer does is it it takes five hundred and forty four bits from from the phi. And processes it all in a single clock cycle and provides um, provides 512 to the 
low, 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 lower above. So that, um, um, yeah, that, that, that's kind of, kind, of, kind, of, kind, of, kind, of, kind of the vision. I, I mean, I mean, I, you obviously know what you're talking about in terms of of the latencies involved in doing forward error corrections and CLC detection. And I, and I mean, I don't, <coughs> if if that. Yeah, so, so I mean, you're welcome to challenge. I mean, these are all assumptions. You're welcome to challenge any of them if they're they're they're, 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 they're incorrect. But, so but yeah. I just wanted. To, oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to maybe add on, maybe partially to what David was saying. Is uh, in, in, a, in essence, the latency impact. You know, actually, you know, the one cycle through the link layer. That's peanuts compared to to latency impact, which more comes from the serialization deserialization aspect. Even if you're using BOW, maybe you have one slice wide or two slices wide or you know or or a few slices wide, you know, uh, there's still going to be that deserialization uh, uh, latency for 512 bits, uh, which I think was part of David's point. Uh, and then just a little higher level from that was I guess just for the observation that the choice of going down a error detection and retry approach, I mean, has, you know, um, I guess you might say, has latency impact depending on how much depends on the details, and there's a complexity impact um, uh, versus with uh, 